So about to put the saddle back on, I've been um, doing more cleaning, cleaning up the ways back there and raising and lowering this thing and getting all that done. And I found something that should stand up against oil and chips, which will guard the gearing there from getting loaded up with chips in the future. If anything does get in here, it's gonna end up getting stuck in here first. I'm gonna buy some skirting so when this all gets assembled, there'll be rubber skirts on here which will prevent any sort of chips from even getting on this, so. So I had to do a little adjusting on that insert there so that that thing would clear it. It does go over it. It rubs, but it does go over it. It's flexible and it moves. So we'll see how that does. About the best I can do for right now. I didn't even think about this because it sticks down. But like I said, I mean, I'm going to have other stuff on here to keep the chips from going in there. So it may not end up being a problem after all. Well, this is assembled as much as I can assemble until the table gets here. Everything's cleaned up. It's all buttoned down. This goes to the table. All the other oil hoses are in their respective spots. Got this lead screw in. It's all adjusted. Got the oiler all hooked up. Things oiled and cleaned. So just waiting on the table. So I've been testing the oiling system and it's not oiling. I know the passages are fine because I've cleaned them and blown them out. So it's between these lines and the metering block, which I'm about to pull off. That's gonna come off as well and get cleaned out. Although this is moving oil just fine. I've already tested that. I don't know about that there. So that is gonna come apart and that's gonna come off. These are meters right here. They're number ones. They're going to be the first thing I'm going to use the ultrasonic cleaner for. All this is going to get cleaned up. The metering block will get put in there. I need to make sure that I have all ones. There might be some zeros in there. So whichever ones have zeros, I need to mark it so that they go back in the same spot. And hopefully that will fix the problem. But I'm more than likely going to go ahead and buy some new plastic hose and replumb this with new hose just to be on the double safe side. The meters should only need cleaning and they should be good again. I don't want to have to replace those because they're like uh, 10, 12 bucks each I hear. And I could wind up spending 150 bucks on meters. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so I'm going to order new oil. I'll go ahead and save that oil somewhere, make sure it's clean. I might get a new Lexan tub to go there. I have to see how much those are. Uh, the remainder can just be clean and all that is going to come apart and get put in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. Parts in there, and this is in a nearly pure alcohol solution. This is military grade isopropyl alcohol. There's nearly no water in that at all. So I'm gonna be doing this at room temperature because a hot bath could create a problem because that'll evaporate and build up pressure. So the ultrasonic cleaning is done and that's what that looks like. I ran that through eight cycles. Each cycle is 16 minutes long and then I let it cool off between cycles. I didn't heat the water up because that's like 99.99% pure isopropyl alcohol. It's military grade. It, it evaporates at room temperature, like 72 degrees. So I didn't want to put it in a hot bath and then the jar blows up. It also works good on grease. I did put some dish soap in there to help break the surface tension of the parts. And um, we'll go ahead and uh, get those parts out of there and see what they look like. So I got this together. Each one is with its corresponding number. That's the plug end. That's the oil supply end. You can see I put an arrow there. And I air tested it and I'm getting a very good volume of air out of each one of these, which wasn't happening before, so that ultrasonic cleaner cleaned them up. And so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm gonna find out how much these are online. We got ten of these, so we saved at least a hundred bucks right there. I'm pretty sure these were the problem, judging how gummy this is. They were gummy in there. And I'm still gonna go ahead and replace those plastic tubes in the saddle because the hole isn't really that big and it's probably got a little more restriction from, from gummy oil. The tubing isn't that much money. I can get a whole roll of it for like 12 bucks. So it's no big deal. Th these were the big deal right here. So I'm glad I don't have to replace them. So yeah, that's just great. I mean, I gotta tell you, I was really skeptical about that ultrasonic cleaner, but I'm 
after seeing how this came out, I'm, I'm completely sold on it. And the alcohol mixture worked perfect. And I will post the information on the alcohol and where to get it if you want to get it for your shop. It's, it's way better than getting the chemicals. I mean, you're still going to need chemicals, you know? I mean, but it's like I said, I, I have to clean the chemicals up after I clean what I'm trying to clean with the chemicals. And the smell just lingers on. And the alcohol, it doesn't. I mean, I just blow it out and I'm good. I don't have nothing to clean up. It solulizes the oils and greases. And, um, you know, I just put a little, little bit of dish soap in there to help break the surface tension. And that's all I did. The, the rest was all alcohol. I mean, just look at that. That's what, that's what came out of the, that's what came out of that stuff. So yeah, I'm really, really happy that I got that now and we'll continue experimenting with it down the road. But so far, this is really good. So it's the next day and you can see a lot of that stuff has fallen out of solution. So I have to uh, think of how I'm going to recover that and I'm going to put into there. So you can get rid of that bad stuff down there. And then we'll just store that and keep it for the next cleaning.